I'm Dr. Teresa Bowling, Vice Chairman of the Department of Anesthesia at Stanford Hospital. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how we place thoracic paravertebral blocks in catheters. Positioning is of the utmost importance, and there's three ways you can position patients, in the prone, the lateral, or the upright position. Typically at Stanford Hospital, we position our patients in the upright position, leaning over a table just like we would for an epidural catheter. Once the patient is positioned properly, we mark out the landmarks, which I'm going to demonstrate later on in this video. Uh, we then use ultrasound now routinely for all placements of our paravertebral blocks. This block is utilized at Stanford Hospital for breast surgery, for thoracic surgery, and for rib fractures. In fact, this block has replaced epidural catheters for all of those procedures. We've had profound success with this block, particularly for our breast surgery patients who are having a pain-free recovery for the duration of the catheter um, being in the patient. At the Stanford Hospital, we typically position our patients in the sitting position when we place a thoracic paravertebral block or catheter. On this model, we have marked out the pertinent landmarks. We have the patient um, lean over a table, just as if we were doing an epidural, and we palpate the top of the scapula and the bottom of the scapula. And these typically correspond with the T3 level at the top of the scapula and the T7, T8 level at the bottom. The most prominent spinous process is by far C7, so I usually start there and then palpate my way down, marking out each spinous process in the corresponding um, level. For the placement of the block, if you're not using ultrasound, you take a ruler and measure two and a half centimeters lateral to the midline on the side that you're doing the block and mark out that space. I've done that here for C7, T2, and T4. When we first started doing blocks at Stanford Hospital, we would do single shot injections blindly at C7, T2, T4. Um, and now that we've gotten a little more sophisticated, we do a single um, injection, um, basically in the middle of the dermatome that we want to get the best coverage, and we do a single shot block and we'll place a catheter there. We do, know, however, use ultrasound for all of our blocks. We still, however, mark the patients. I'm going to place this ultrasound probe linear, lateral to the spinous processes at the level at which I want to block and look for my image. This can be a challenging block um, using ultrasound because the needle target can be deep and the angle is very steep for the needle. I usually scan to try to find the best level in the area I want to be and that's, we're seeing a pretty good shot right here. And what you can see are the spinous processes on either side of the screen, a bright white line down at the bottom, which is the pleura, and right above that is a black space, and that is your paravertebral space, which is separated by a thin membrane right above it. If you inject above that membrane, you're going to achieve an intercostal block and possibly some degree of a paravertebral block, but ideally, you want to have your needle below that membrane so that you can inject the local anesthetic and you'll get good spread, just like a dermatome. We typically inject 15 mLs at a single level, and we achieve two to three dermatomes with that volume. Uh, and most of these patients also get a catheter. We thread it at this space approximately two centimeters beyond the tip of the needle. It's very characteristic when you stick the needle in the patient and it's in the proper place, the paravertebral space. You'll see expansion of that space as the fluid fills that potential space and pushes the pleura down into the lung. Early on, it was very frustrating um, when we were trying to place these blocks because you found that you were hitting the spinous processes and unable to get between the two spinous processes. Uh, after doing a lot of these blocks, we realized it was because we were putting our image in the middle of the screen, which is what we typically do for most of our neural blocks. However, in this block, it's very helpful in order to position the needle properly into the paravertebral space by moving one of the spinous processes off the ultrasound image and that gives you a better um, angle placement for the paravertebral um, block. Um, obviously I'm going to stick a needle in this volunteer here, but this is typically the angle that we go in. It's about a 45 degree angle. 
This is the type of block that the needle will come in and out of plane and it can be very helpful to have a good assistant who can hydro dissect for you because very often the tip of the needle will become in and out of plane and with a little bit of local anesthetic or normal saline, you can locate the tip of your needle due to the hydro dissection. And this is approximately the angle in which we put it in. Um, typically, I can look at the screen right here and I can tell you that I would expect the paravertebral space to be at about four centimeters. Um, if I got to five or six centimeters with this needle, I'd start to get concerned that perhaps a needle is not where I thought it was and I could be um, violating the pleura. The incidence of pneumothorax with this block is less than 1%, so it is relatively uh, very safe, but certainly um, pneumothorax is always a potential complication. This video demonstrates a thoracic paravertebral block. It's important to identify the landmarks, which are the transverse processes on either side of the screen with the bony dropout beneath them and the bright white pleura with the lung beneath it. The needle is entering from a right to left direction. And as it's advanced, you will see it pass the transverse process, walk off the process, and advance. And it's helpful to have an assistant at this point inject some local anesthetic to help identify the tip of the needle placement. After a cc or so of local anesthetic is injected, you can see that the needle is not in the right space. It's too high and needs to be advanced a millimeter or two. Once the needle is advanced, local anesthetic is again injected, and you can see that the paravertebral space expands, and as it expands, the pleura dips down towards the lung, as the local anesthetic spreads in a north and south direction. This will confirm that you have an excellent paravertebral block when you see this filling of the paravertebral space with local anesthetic, and you can be confident that your nerve block is going to be successful.